Welcome back to another video guys. We have a very cool video prepared for you guys today. I know this is one that a lot of you guys have been very interested in over the past few months here once I started showing you guys some of these back tests. Um, we're going to go through this entire strategy here. Again, I think we've talked about this a lot on the YouTube live streams every single day, but there's a very key difference between systematic trading and discretionary trading in the market. Most of you guys that are entering the market here in learning to trade are learning discretionary tra strategies where you're effectively looking at a lot of these market conditions and thinking to yourself, what do you think is going to happen next? Now, you guys have all heard these statistics in the past that 99% of retail traders fail, and that is the exact reason why they fail. They think that they can come in, learn something of a strategy, and then implement it in the market. But the problem is, is the strategy that they're probably using, not back testable, not repeatable, and really depends on how they're feeling or how the market is reacting on any given day. So what we're going to be doing here, and this might turn into a little bit of a series here, is going through and testing a lot of these strategies and teaching you guys the key differences as to why trading in this way is going to have much more long-term success for you than trying to get rich quick, which I know sounds good, but never ever works so again if you do have a strategy that you want me to test um, make sure you guys comment that down below but be very very specific in what you are looking to test there again guys these strategies are going to be incredibly specific especially as you guys have seen before in the day trading mastery course with that zero losing months in 2023 strategy once you guys start viewing the markets this way you think to yourself was it really that easy and the answer is yes it actually was so let's get into it here. The first couple of things that we need to talk about is this one concept as to why we're looking at the markets the way that we are here before we really start talking about what this strategy is, how it works, why it works. So when you think about the three main key pillars of trading, you have to think about strategy, risk management, and psychology. Now, most of you guys are struggling with your risk management and psychology, and the main reason for that is that your strategy isn't as clearly well-defined as it could be, and you have the ability as a trader to go find trades when none actually exist because you are bored in the market, you're trying to chase uh, losers out there, you're trying to make back some of those losses that you had, or you're just sitting there trying to further your gains with strategies like this guys it's impossible to do that so you have to then know yourself as a trader as a person the vast majority of you guys are going to fall into some of those categories where you might look at a strategy but then think you're following it but not actually if you were to actually look at your trades in your journals which you should all be keeping so how do you solve all of this well you need to have a couple of things that are input into your strategy one back testable two kind of a furtherance of that point there, it is repeatable and also incredibly specific as to what you are looking for. Now, there are most times in the market, guys, where I don't even know what the SPY is trading at. I'm just looking for specific things to happen in the market and then executing based on these strategies because why? I know the math over time. I know what I'm supposed to be risking and I know what the win rate and risk to reward typically is with these strategies, which is able to give you long-term success. And that is what we are all here for. So let's get right into this strategy here, guys, and pull up this article right here from Reuters. So when we look up here, overall, the S&P 500 has registered losses for four straight weeks. It's uh, longest such streak in a year. Now, this article was made uh in september of 2020 so coming back down in here this is just a little bit of a precursor to what we're going to be talking about so besides some ever so modest gains in the opening half hour the rest of the day consists of investors hitting bids and unloading stocks september's activity returned u.s stocks closer to their long-term trend of outperforming in after hours trading versus regular session trading now, that's a very key point there. September's activity returned U.S. stocks closer to their long-term trend of outperforming in after-hours trading versus regular session trading, in contrast with most of 2020 when they outperformed during the regular session. Since the S&P 500 ETF trust, which tracks the S&P 500, launched in 1993, it has posted a 722% return in after-hours trading but an 8.5% loss in trading during the regular session, according to Bespoke. 
However, geopolitical, macroeconomic developments, yada, 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 have led to after hours uh, underperformance in several recent instances. Now, why might this be the case? Well, as you guys have seen recently, there's been an increasing amount of volume and expiration dates of zero date to expiration options, leading to a little bit more volatility. And when markets start to move in one direction, they can move very aggressively in those directions, whether it be up or down. And you see a lot of price pinning happening during the regular trading hours. So, when we're thinking about this type of strategy here, a 722% return in after hours, but an 8.5% loss in the regular trading session, that's definitely something that we want to take a look at because if there's such an outlandish uh, or, or outsized rate of return in one time period versus another, well, that's definitely going to pique our interest in something that we want to test. Now, there are a couple of different research reports out there, and I definitely need to mention these when we're talking about a strategy like this that say, well, after fees and some other things that could happen, the gains, if you were to trade this strategy, just buying overnight and selling at market open, which we're going to go over in a second here, a lot of those gains would have actually been eaten up. Now, the other thing that you have to be aware of as well is, well, what happens when the market aggressively gaps down? Well, how do we manage risk? So here's what I've done. I've crafted a strategy here for you guys, and we go over the performance with this, and we actually show you two different scenarios. And I wanna show you that data here, but I first wanna kind of talk about exactly how this strategy is going to work and why you could potentially trade the strategy in this way. So what a lot of these overnight trading session strategies are going to entail is buying at the close, so 4 p.m. Eastern time, and selling at market open. Now, if you're trading shares, um, you're going to run into some issues there just in terms of the amount of leverage that you're going to be able to take overnight. If you're trading options, you're not necessarily going to be able to know for sure what those contracts are going to be priced at the next day. And again, it is very, very, very hard to backtest. So what do we do? Well, we need to go with something that is going to have pretty low fees, a decent amount of leverage, and we know exactly what the prices of our positions are going to be worth at any given time. The perfect solution to this is the futures market. Now, the one thing that you guys may not know about certain futures brokers and directly going to the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, is that there's different margin requirements at different brokers and for different times of the day. On the typical brokers that you're going to see, Trade of 8, Ninja Trader, the day margin is going to be about $500 per contract, meaning that you're only going to have to put up about $500 of margin in order to control one of these futures contracts. Now, if you were to go directly to the exchange, that number is going to go from $500 to upwards of $12,000, which I highly doubt a lot of you guys are able to withstand. So, how do we solve this? Well, the other thing that we need to think about here, and I forgot to mention this, is that between the hours of 5 p.m. Eastern Time and 6 p.m. Eastern Time every single day, well, the futures market is not trading. So if you were to hold a position through that period of time following some of the strategies and the way that they are outlined here, well, your margin requirement would go from $500 at 4 p.m. to $12,000, upwards of $12,000 per contract in that time period between 5 and 6 p.m., and you're probably going to get forced out of whatever position that you have. So how do we solve this? Well, instead of buying directly at the close, we buy at the open at 6 p.m. Eastern so that you guys and anybody else that would want to trade this strategy would still be able to use that $500 of what's called day margin because that's going to apply as that 6 p.m. open happens and throughout the rest of the night going into 9.30 a.m. and all the way into about 4.45 p.m. Eastern time. This is incredibly important. That is the one thing that completely changes this strategy here that you guys need to understand. So, Here's what the strategy is going to entail. It's going to be buying at 6 p.m. Eastern time and selling at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. Now, when we go take a look at the data here, I'm actually going to have two columns in terms of what the points gains are per day in every single year of 2023. Because as we saw in that 20-year period there, or approximately 20-year period, this strategy was able to return about 700%, but there's not necessarily any criteria given in terms of what position sizes that they're using, what leverage are they using, um, and are they stepping up the actual amount of their positions as their portfolio continues to grow. So what do we have to do? Well, we have to test it ourselves. So 
when we come along over here, let me actually bring this up very quickly for you guys. This is what we are looking at in terms of this data. So it is a little bit out of order because I was doing these tests at different times. November is up here. They're all in order. And then December is going to be all the way down here. Uh, I just had to do this one today. I forgot I actually didn't have that data in there. And unsurprisingly, the data actually gets even better with that additional month in. So what I have here is the price of the 6 p.m. open and then the price of the 9.30 a.m. open. Now, the P&L right here that you see in column N is going to be with no adjustments and no risk management strategy. That is the only adjustment that we are making to this. Now, here is where that adjustment comes in terms of the actual risk management that we're using. A little bit of a background here. One point on ES is worth $50. So if you have one contract, your margin that you're putting in is $500. Well, the maximum loss that you could take before your broker actually liquidating you is about 10 points. Now, could we make this a little bit lower? We could, but again, the max loss that we are going to be witnessing in an overnight trading session is going to be nine points. Now, again, you're going to need to size this appropriately. The risk management here is going to be up to you, but I want to present this data for you guys because these strategies like this right here, where it doesn't necessarily matter what's going on with the market and you can still make money when you, again, as you guys can see here with this data that we're going to see, you don't really know exactly the inner workings of the market. This is a perfect strategy to kind of get started with. So looking at this right here, we see the P&L in column N. And in all of these little areas right here, we have the total points for November without a stop and the total points for November in every single month with a stop. So in the month of November, there were about 10 wins, 11 losses. With the stop, you were able to net about 127 points. Without the stop, 185 points. Now, just to put that into perspective for you guys, remember, one point on ES is worth about $50. So when you go 50 times 182.5 is going to equal about $9,125. But with the stop, Again, it's going to limit some of these losses, and it can, in some cases, limit some of the gains if the after-hours trading periods are going to be increasingly volatile. But even those 127 points was about $6,350 with one contract with this strategy. So going through this data a little bit more, again, you are going to see some losing months, but as you can see coming down here, we don't have a label for this one, but in October, without that stop, the strategy was down about 53 points on ES with the stop. 57 points in the green so as you guys can see this strategy is going to be able to limit some of the losses and still give you those very very solid gains september six wins 14 losses and this was a red month here remember this is another strategy that i like to use sometimes not the zero losing months in 2023 strategy that i teach you guys uh in the day trading mastery course again there is a 30 percent off code right now using code stv30 link down below but Going through here as well, again, in the month of August, uh, with that nine-point stop, you're able to net 35 points. No stop, you're able to get 20, uh, 21 points. July, uh, you had 11 wins over here. Uh, and then you have the uh, no stop was able to get 69 points with the stop 114 points. So what that tells you is, is that with some of these large gap downs that you're witnessing in the market, well, if you were able to limit your losses, you're still able to fully capitalize on the gains. So we essentially are able to limit our uh, limit our losses and maximize our gains here. Coming down a little bit further into June, again, uh, the no stop actually had only a 19 point loss, but the stop had about 33 here. So a little bit of kind of um, outlier data there. Coming down a little bit further in May, stop 7.25 points in the green uh, with no stop 52 points in the green. No stop in April minus 63 points, but with the stop in April, it saved you only down about 28 points here. Coming down to March, you were able to make 95 points with the stop with no stop, negative 19 points. Coming down a little bit further into February, this is an interesting one. So no stop, you were down a whopping 184 points, having no stop loss on this strategy. With that nine point stop loss every single day, you were only down about 23 points. Coming into January, you were down about eight points. And it, with the no stop in January, you were down about 19. And then coming to December here, I know we're kind of giving away some of the data here, but with uh, no stop in December, you were able to get about 47 points with the stop about 56 points. Now, with no risk management here throughout the entire year, you would have actually been down about 69 points. With the stop, you were able to make about 352 points. 
Now, if we do the math on that, 352.5 times 50, that is about $17,625. Now, that may not seem like a lot to some of you guys. You might be thinking, oh no, I wanna make $100,000 in the market. I wanna make a million dollars in the market. Well, most of you guys right now are making $0 in the market um, and actually losing money. So having these types of strategies where you can pull them together, use some other ones, and actually start scaling up over time is going to help your portfolio grow over the long run, which is exactly what you need to be focusing on. Long-term growth, not quick money. So that's basically going to be wrapping up this video here, guys, in a little bit of kind of tying this all up in a nice little bow here. It's very simple. Most of the market gains are over time, and we've seen this time and time again through many, many, many years of data, uh, have come from the overnight trading session. Now, there can be a couple of different reasons and explanations for this, but again, our testing is showing the exact same thing. Now, the cool thing about this is that those of you guys that like to trade with prop firms, you will be able to trade this strategy with a prop firm if you choose to do so. Now, the other thing, guys, again, I know I said this before, that you don't necessarily want to be focusing in on those really quick gains right away. But just to kind of put this into perspective for you guys, if you were an individual that is wanting to take on a lot more risk um, and you were trading with a $10,000 account at the beginning of the year, and I believe this returned in terms of profit about $16,000. Well, again, your account's up 160% in the year, beating every single hedge fund out there to exist. So Again, those numbers are going to come down the lower amount that you risk, but this is definitely a strategy that I've seen a lot of these large research firms do. There's also some research out there that I believe it's JP Morgan in particular has crafted a strategy around this as well. This is what large money does, guys. Not all the nonsense that you see out there on the internet. They craft some strategies like this, they automate them, and they let them work and make sure that the back testing is accurate so that they can then go and sit back, relax, and make their money. So that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. If you do want to see more videos like this where we go through these types of strategies, leave a like down below, leave a comment, and make sure you guys subscribe for more. But other than that, peace.